Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to show you how you can set up a GitLab server on Ubuntu hosted on Amazon Web Services. So simply click the link in the description box to come to this marketplace listing for Amazon and from here you want to create a new EC2 virtual machine with this particular image as this image comes with pre-installed GitLab. So simply click on continue to subscribe. After that, on this product page, you need to verify your subscription. And once that is done, you can simply click on continue to configuration. And then from this page, you can choose the AMI, the software version and the region where you want your virtual machine to be deployed. So when you are satisfied, simply click on continue to launch. And then from this page, you can choose to launch the virtual machine from either the website, which is this one or from the EC2 management console. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go with the website. So scroll down and choose the instance type according to your requirements. Go with the default VPC settings and the default subnet settings and for the security group, make sure to choose the GitLab server CE community edition security group. If you don't see this, then you need to refresh this once. After that, scroll down and choose the key pair for your SSH login. Now remember this is the key pair that you would be using to connect to the SSH terminal of your virtual machine. Once everything is done, simply click on launch to actually create that virtual machine. Now you would get this prompt that an instance of this software is successfully deployed on EC2. Now if you want to visit the EC2 console, simply click over here and that should open up the EC2 management console in a new tab. Now the virtual machine in the pending state without a name is a newly created virtual machine. So I'm going to give it a name as GitLab CE which stands for community edition and then simply wait for the virtual machine to change its state from pending to running. Once the machine is in the running state, we can move on to the next step. And the next step is to connect to the SSH terminal of your virtual machine. Now for that, simply right click on your virtual machine and then click on connect. Now from here, you want to copy this command and paste it inside either a command prompt or a powershell and then you want to replace this path for the path where you have downloaded your private key. Now after replacing the path, simply hit enter and when you are prompted type in yes and hit enter once more. After that, you would be able to log into the SSH terminal of your virtual machine. Now inside this terminal, the very first thing that we want to do is that we want to configure our GitLab service. So for that simply type in the command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash gitlab forward slash gitlab dot rb and then hit enter. Now that is going to open up the configuration file for gitlab. Now in this configuration file we want to change the url. So we simply want to change this line and we want to set it equal to our domain name. And if you do not have a domain associated with your newly created virtual machine then you can simply pass in the IP address for your virtual machine. So for that, simply go back to EC2 management console, go to instances, click on your virtual machine and simply copy this public IPv4 IP address. And then go back to command prompt and simply remove this domain but keep the HTTP part and then paste in your IP address. After that, simply hit Ctrl O, hit enter and then Ctrl X. Now after that, we want to run the reconfiguration for GitLab. So for that, the command is sudo gitlab hyphen ctl space reconfigure and then hit enter. After that you need to simply wait for the reconfiguration process to complete. Once the reconfiguration is done, we can access our gitlab portal. So for that simply go back to ec2 management console, copy the ip address and paste it inside a new tab and then hit enter. After that you would be able to see this portal. Now to login into GitLab as the root user, we need to change the password for the root user. For that, simply head back to command prompt and paste in this command, which is the sudo gitlab rake. And then in single quotation marks, you type in gitlab colon password colon reset and then in square brackets, you type in root. After that, simply hit enter and you would be prompted to type in the new password. So simply type in the new root password and then reconfirm the password. Once that is done, you can simply come back to the portal, type in root and then the password that you just changed and then hit enter. So that should allow you to log in into GitLab as the root user. And then in here you can create projects by clicking this button and more stuff like that. But that is not the concern of this tutorial. Now if you want to give the SSL certificate using Let's Encrypt, then simply click the link in the description box to come to this step by step blog post guide. And in here simply scroll down to this part and simply copy these lines and paste them inside the configuration file. So if I go back to my command prompt and my configuration file was at sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash gitlab forward slash gitlab 
dot rb and in here i can simply scroll down and then paste the lines over here and then when you're copying this line remember that you need to change this email according to your administrator's email and after that simply copy these last three lines and paste them inside the command prompt once that is done simply hit ctrl o hit enter ctrl x and then at the last you need to run the reconfiguration once more so type in sudo gitlab hyphen ctl space reconfigure and then hit enter after that you would be able to get the ssl certificate using let's encrypt so that is it for this tutorial now if you have any queries regarding this tutorial make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section and make sure to check out the link in the description box for the marketplace listing for amazon web services and for the step by step blog post guide and if this video has helped you in any way make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel